And when they reopen the detector and analyze the data, well, the Xenon collaboration got more interactions than they bargained for. What's up, you scholars of enlightenment? Today, we're going to start with a question. So, what do a displaced dwarf lord and a three-ton underground tub of super-purified, ultra-chilled xenon have in common? Well, they both want to be king under the mountain. Long live the king! Long live the king! Because this is the story of how the dark matter hunting Zenin collaboration discovered a mysterious excess. And in doing so, might have taken some of the first steps towards unraveling one of the universe's most difficult and puzzling mysteries. Dark matter. What the fuck is going on? 85% of the matter in the universe is so-called dark matter, which we cannot see and which we know very little about. That's a great embarrassment for us physicists, something we're usually only used to experiencing everyday social situations. But how do we know that this dark matter is out there if we can't see it? Hell. Well, like the wind, either, even though we can't see it, we can see its effect through its gravitational interaction with regular matter. The rotational velocities of stars and galaxies as we proceed out from the galactic center remains higher than we would expect if all the matter that existed in the galaxy were visible. That gives the way the existence of an additional hidden matter or dark matter and an immense dark matter halo. But what is dark matter made of? And can we observe it directly? Well, that's where the Xenon collaboration comes in. The Xenon collaboration are looking for dark matter candidates called WIMPs, which you might think isn't a difficult task given the state of the world today. But he's a pussy, that's terrible. Terrible. But they're looking for a very special kind of WIMP. Weakly interacting massive particles. And it makes sense that a good dark matter candidate must interact weakly with ordinary matter. Otherwise, we'd have seen them already and they'd be interacting all the time. And they must be massive because they interact with normal matter via gravity. Hence, weakly interacting massive particles. And in order to detect the potential but very infrequent interactions of these WIMPs with normal matter, the Xenon collaboration installed a three-ton vat of Xenon under a mountain at the IFNF labs in Gran Sasso, Italy. The huge interaction tank containing several tons of Xenon for the WIMPs to hit ensures that we get as many WIMP interactions as possible and ensures that the Xenon one-ton detector is sensitive to WIMPs across a very wide range of energies and above a very low, lower threshold of energy on the killer electron volt scale. We'll discuss the interaction mechanism between WIMPs and the Xenon shortly. The mountain, on the other hand, shields the Xenon one-ton detector from all kinds of background particle radiation, filtering out many unwanted background interactions and ensuring only WIMPs and a few other weakly interacting particles like neutrinos can reach the Xenon and interact. Stay out of my territory. The materials selected for the Xenon 1T detector have extremely low intrinsic radiation as well, lowering unwanted backgrounds even further. Even the Xenon itself is ultra purified to remove contaminants like Krypton that could decay and add background interactions. Any remaining residual backgrounds that cannot be removed, like the interactions of neutrinos, can be anticipated by previous studies and models and modeled using theoretical models and measurements. We'll discuss this further in part two. Once you fully understand the interactions that you expect to see, 
the background. You can remove it and anything left over is something new, the signal, and maybe your dark matter wimps. In fact, the background interactions in Xenon Wonton are so low that the collaboration even observed the rarest decay process to ever occur in a detector, the decay of Xenon 124 to Tellurium 124, a process with a measured half-life of 1.8 times 10 to the 22 years. To put that into perspective, that's one trillion times the age of the universe. Long time to wait. Xenon one ton is extremely clean and extremely low background. So how does the Xenon one ton detector work? Well, the Xenon one ton detector is a huge tank of Xenon inside a huger tank of water. The huge tank of water provides additional shielding against unwanted particle radiation reaching the Xenon detector and also allows high energy muons from cosmic rays to be identified and rejected. Because when high energy charged particles like muon traverse a substance like water at a speed higher than the speed of light in that substance, they produce Cherenkov light. That's the origin of the beautiful blue-green glow in the cooling water of nuclear reactors. So if we see a track in the water tank that lines up with a hit in the xenon, we know that it must have been something like a muon and we can reject it from our analysis. Now get the fuck out of here. Inside that water tank, you have the huge central tank of 3.2 tons of xenon. The xenon in the lower tank is liquid, while that at the top is in the gaseous phase. A central volume of two tons of xenon is used to detect anything that makes its way inside and interacts with the xenon, including, and hopefully, our weakly interacting massive particles, our WIMPs. And this central two tons of xenon is where the magic happens. It's electrifying, it's exciting. When a particle reaches the xenon from the outside, it can interact with the xenon nucleus or the xenon electrons. This causes the xenon nucleus or electrons to recoil and leaves a trail of excited xenon and ionized electrons. The excited xenon isomers then relax and release a prompt flash of UV scintillation light, known as S1, signal one. Meanwhile, the ionized electrons from the track drift to the top of the chamber under an applied electric field. Once they reach the liquid gas xenon boundary, they excite and ionize more gaseous xenon, causing an additional flash of light, S2, signal two. Photomultiplier tubes in a 2D pattern on the top and bottom of the xenon tank reconstruct the X and Y position of the initial interaction, while the delay time between the first and second flashes of light and a known drift time for free electrons in liquid xenon under a known electric field allow the Z position, the depth in the tank, to be calculated. This allows xenon one ton to have a full 3D interaction position reconstruction. Where did you come from? Where did you go? The Xenon collaboration allowed the Xenon one ton detector to take a physics run from 2016 to 2018 to allow as many interactions in the Xenon as possible, keeping the detector functional and stable for such a long period of time against temperature fluctuations, power cuts, etc., was a monumental achievement. And when they reopened the detector, and analyze the data, well, the Xenon collaboration got more interactions than they bargained for. Could this be dark matter? Well, to understand the results, you'll have to wait for the next video.